Black ground paintings are one of the four color combination styles that we find with Himalayan art. The, the, the four are basically uh, multicolor ground works, uh, black, uh, gold, and red. So what this means is it means that basically the, the entire background of the painting is, uh, is either a mixed color, uh, possibly with landscape and uh, forest trees, water, or it's black where there, there's very little detail or, or gold or, or red. Now, all, all of these have their own origins. Uh, now, the black ground, this really comes about quite early. So we're looking at 7th, 8th, 9th century. We're looking at uh, things such as uh, the Chakrasambhara Tantras, the Hevajra Tantras, the two Mahakala Tantras, where a semi-peaceful, semi-wrathful, and wrathful deities, especially protector deities, uh, are painted on charnel ground cloth and well, basically, there it's charnel ground cloth, and then you mix charnel ground ashes and charcoal to, to make the the coloring of black, <clears throat> and then you use a lighter color, a kind of a tan or a brown color, uh, a, a dark yellowy orange ochre color, uh, to make the outline of the deity of Chakrasambhara or Hevajra or Mahakala. These are really the origins of the black ground, and. Up until really the, up until the 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 sixteenth seventeenth century, these were really um, uh, black ground was reserved for these uh, semi peaceful, semi wrathful meditational deities and uh, wisdom protectors. Not all, not always used for for worldly protectors, because the worldly protectors are not coming out of India. They're not coming out of Sanskrit texts. The worldly protectors are coming out of out of uh, Himalayan and Tibetan um, folk culture and uh, uh, various stories of teachers subjugating mountain gods and, and, and lake gods and goddesses and different figures like that. So, over time, as with is this common with art, different artists began to add more and more color. So, so in the 15th, 16th century, we do get begin to see more color being applied for the, the, the figures, the central deity, while the, the background is still uh, black. But into the 17th, 18th, 19th century, we begin to see where, where more color can be added, where you have the general idea that the, the, the background is very black, but now all the figures are being filled in. Now, not for all paintings and not in all styles and with all artists, but, but we do begin to see this where we, we start to have the figures filled in with multicolor, but the background, uh, everything surrounding the figures is, is black. Now also, during the Qianlong period, which is the 18th century in China, we do begin to get some peaceful deities being represented in a, in a, with a black background. And, and this is, this is uh, for completely different reasons. These are rubbings that were done um, uh, from stone, from steles, and, uh, and they're not done for the same purpose as the Sanskrit texts, which are discussing how to create a painting for, for um, tantric practice. Now, in modern times, many artists in, uh, in, in China, in the Tibetan cultural regions of China, uh, are also painting peaceful deities against a black background. So, so this is really unheard of traditionally. Th this is a modern concept, and it's done for reasons of commodity. It's done for, um, for creating a product to sell. So, so this is not a, a religious change. This is a this is a a, a modern uh, business uh, venture. So, so we have these various uh, uh, origins, but then we have these changes that have occurred over time, and we have really a lot of very very good examples of black ground paintings from about the 11th, 12th century up until the present.